And what I'm going to try to do, um, hopefully successfully, is describe to SharePoint the fact that I'm about to give it a button that I want to do a thing. And it's just one of those examples. And I saw in the chat quite a lot of people use SharePoint. Um, sorry, use JSON in respect of SharePoint. Uh, let's just get my screens organized. Where have I put my screens? Here we go. Um, so here I've got a really simple SharePoint list. Um, yeah, for those observing, uh, you... can we just do okay. just a little bit? Yeah, sorry, Connor. Yeah, uh, there Thank we go. Oops, that's too much. <laughs> Bear with me. Um, can you see that? Okay, that yep. reasonable resolution. Good. So make a note, John. One hundred and fifty percent is not bad for the viewer. And I'll just quickly zoom this up uh, if I can. F eleven. Um, okay. So JSON as a tool can be used in many, many places. Um, one of the more common places, as you've seen from um, people's comments there, is that very often used to do a little bit more in the context of SharePoint. And what you're seeing here is a SharePoint list. It's in our events manager. This is a real live example. So I'm going to apologize to Nate Chamberlain if I accidentally reject or approve his submission. Big spoiler alert, we are planning a conference. Woohoo! Um, called Intranet Insights, and uh, it isn't a surprise to us, but it might be to you that that is going to be running on the 24th of April. Uh, so keep a note, put something in your diary. There will be some information coming out soon. However, what you're now seeing is a um, an example where through our automated process, which happens to be a form, happens to be Power Automate, I've put an item into a list. And one of the, the really good examples of using JSON is to enhance what you already have in SharePoint, especially in SharePoint lists. Um, natively, you don't really have the concept of a button in a SharePoint list, not like you're seeing here on screen. There isn't a column type that you can expose, which just very easily says to you, I need a button to approve or, or reject something or a button to launch something or a button to delete something. You can do a lot through this um, uh, let me just try it's because I zoom my screen a little bit. But in the integrate menu, you can do a lot in a SharePoint list through this menu. And you can do things like if I select a row here, John's demo testing, I can have um, I'll just show it to you because then you'll get the context for it. I can have an instant flow, which that's what this is, that can be run. And you can you can hook that into a SharePoint list via this integrate button here and it will show that instant flow up in your list. And that's fantastic. That's really nice use case for a lot of people. I'll show you how to do that if you wish to, but there is a big limitation for that. And the limitation is if you are in a SharePoint list here and you start to get a little bit more um, process driven, I'm gonna say, I don't know if that's the right word, but we started very much thinking about the fact we have flows all over the place. We have apps all over the place. And we started to think about our application lifecycle. So we've begun to move our Power Automate flows from what's called the default environment. I'll just quickly show those of you who may or may not be familiar. You'll see in this environment picker here, everybody has a default environment. Um, not everybody will have all these other environments. And the reason we do is because we chose to go from what Microsoft give you out of the box, which is a default place for all your flows, all your Power Automates, um, your Power Apps to land to a place where we're starting to promote our products into a production zone, I've called it. It could be called anything, but it's promoting to another environment. The moment you begin to do that and you begin to use some of the practices and the techniques that go along with that, for example, one of those is using solutions, you lose that capability to just hook a solution really simply. Uh, let's just get back to the right place that I should be clicking into your, um, sorry, my mistake into your integrate menu it just doesn't work so you have to find another way but that's just one reason why you might want to put these buttons i put them there because for my workflow buttons in a sharepoint list is a lot easier so i'll just pause there and about the use case just invite any questions that people might have as to what i'm about to show you um connor perhaps you could just keep an eye on the chat if that would be OK and scream at me if there's anything to, to answer. Yeah, sure thing. OK, cool. So um, 
Right. So we are in our SharePoint list here. You'll see I've got these two buttons. The process of creating these buttons really isn't that difficult. Um, all you need to do, there's a number of different ways you can do this. And I'm going to zoom back out. I'm sorry, Connor. I know this is offending you because it might be too small. Um, just to give a little bit more real estate. I tend to just go to where I want the column to be created and create a column. There's a number of different ways you can do this. Um, I'm not going to worry about all the different ways, but First thing you need is a column to house your button. It can be any different, uh, any different type, to be honest with you, it doesn't really matter. Um, there are benefits and negatives to using a few of the different types. But for the sake of, of, of this demo, I'm just going to choose a text. Now, when I did this demo last week, interestingly, my preference is always to use a calculated column. And the reason for that is because if you use a calculated column, you can put the next step in that I'm going to use uh, formatting. And when you then add a new item into your list using the form, it doesn't appear, which is what I really want. I just want this button to be behind the scenes and appear. But for some interesting reason on my tenant at the moment, I'm not getting that option and I need to figure out where that's gone. But don't worry about that for now. I'll just click um, a text and click next. So. As I say, to house your JSON, I'm just going to call it JSON column just so you can see it and I can see it when it disappears to the end of the list. Uh, we could give it a description. It's a single line of text. I, I could use a calculated value. I might just click that actually. Um, the default, in fact, let's just go here. Default formula is going to be, it's just blank. Doesn't need anything in it. I'm just going to create the column. That's the first step. The second step, and this is where I historically would have stopped, is to go and search the internet for the correct JSON snippet, I'm going to call it that, that declares a button. Loads and loads of them out there, but often I'd get to a web page and I'd get a little bit lost and I might think that it's doing one thing when it's doing another because I didn't spend the time necessarily looking at the structure of what JSON really is. And it's not that complex. And perhaps in a moment, Connor will just pause and we'll look at some of the aspects of JSON when I've done it. But now we've got the column, all we really need to do is to go into the formatting for that column. It's a strange, strange place for it to be, but this is where it is. Click advanced mode and you'll already see we've got something in there. We've got this JSON format, uh, this JSON schema that's already in the formatting for that column. So SharePoint's already kind of indicating to us there's something you can do with JSON here. Now, here's my shortcut that I use all the time because I'm a bit lazy. I went to Copilot and I said, uh, let me just get my snippet so I don't have to type it out again. I said the following, and you'd be surprised how clever this is. I said, write the JSON to place, um, that should say place a button into a SharePoint list to allow me to launch Power Automate. It may get this right, it might get it wrong. Generally, Copilot, Whatever AI service you use is pretty good at doing this. So it's not only giving me the JSON snippet, so I don't have to care about um, syntax. It's also kind of telling me what I need to do. And this bit here is quite essential. Um, place the ID for the flow here. It's kind of given me a placeholder so I can just copy that. I can stick it in here. Now it won't do anything yet. But what you'll notice is that this save button's enabled. It, there's another little tip I want to just share at this point because this always catches me out. If I break the syntax of JSON, let's say you are one of those people that's comfortable writing it freehand, getting used to the structures that you're seeing, and you copy and paste it in and you're like, ah, oh, do you know, it's not saving. Um, I'm clicking the button there quite a lot, by the way. You can again go back to your co-pilot and in general it will get this right um, so you can say fix this JSON for me let's just see what it does but I use this all the time if I'm using somebody else's JSON and I want to um, port it to what I want to use it will generally tell me what the problem was as well which I really like I think it's just quite a nice use case for AI to, to help us um, I'm not going to test it, but I'm going to assume that that's correct. I think it's just put the quote back in. Yeah, it has. I think it's important so, to uh, to also just point out there that Copilot is very capable of understanding a lot of different language models um, and also different code based languages where it can provide scripts um, and also um, snippets of, of code that you can actually use in your projects. Uh, if you prompt it in the right way, if you prompt it with 
fix my JSON or fix my C++, <laughs> fix my TypeScript, whatever it might be. Give me a PowerShell um, query to, to to do a certain action. Um, it's capable of understanding a lot of those. And what's great is it gives it, you in this nice kind of clear view where you can see uh, exactly what is the AI generated text and what is the code snippet that, it, uh, that it's suggesting for you to use. Yeah, so um, I pro yeah, I won't dig into Debbie's example, but again, you can ask questions of Jason. So if you're in a Power Automate flow and you're trying to, maybe you need to write a piece of Jason which gets a particular attribute from a form, you could simply ask, well, simply, you could structure a question for um, Copilot to say, write me the JSON that gets this piece from that form where you can just give a form name. Um, and generally, it's, get, it's pretty good at giving you accurate results. Um, one worth experimenting with anyway. Um, my, my learning over the last few months is don't dismiss AI because it, it's getting really helpful in this kind of context. So another thing that um, I just want to share with you at this point, um, I'll go back into the format column. We'll see that JSON, uh, am I in the right column? <laughs> Let me just get the right column. I'm not, I've just killed it because I didn't save it because I'm a, a wazzock. Let's just go and put it back. Okay, let's just put that back in there, save that. You'll see that the, um, the flow button has appeared. Now, one thing I did do, and I'll do this in a moment, I'll show you where to get your flow IDs from, is I did start to experiment. And here, I, I simply went to Copilot and I said, that's great. Now, please make it a button that is green. And the piece I want to just share with you, I'll try and zoom up now to see if this is going to give you a slightly better view, is that, yeah, it's, it's very small box, hard to read that. Let's just zoom out a bit. When you start to get used to JSON a little bit more, you do have these kind of, I'm going to call, well, it's an element. You do have these headers. And the style element is particularly useful because it was a style that if I just, um, let's just zoom back. I think we may have lost John. You what, sorry? Have you lost me? Oh, I think he's back. Am I back? Hello? Kids getting home. There we go. We can we can hear you. You can hear me now, can you? Yeah. That's that's weird. Shall I just screen share again? I'll just go back. Can you see my screen now, Connor? Uh, we can. Yes. Excellent. Good. Um, I don't know what you heard, but the the essence of what I was trying to get across is that again, you can just use AI to say, I'd like you give it the JSON and say, I'd like you to adapt that JSON to give me a green button that fires off my power automate flow and it will give you the style the style settings if you like that you need to apply so for example here um, you will see that my uh, my style has a solid border it's chosen the colors for the border and the background it's decided what the point is going to look like and all these extra little bits that me naturally i don't know so i went and i i asked ai for that support so the last bit that I'd like to show you is just um, the only piece of this puzzle that was uh, in any way, shape or form a little bit. I had to check myself, not complex, but you just got to go to the right place is this bit here. So, um, again, it, Connor and I will talk about this in a moment, but there are specific kinds of elements that you can create. And in using Elm type element type button, there's an expectation that there's going to be a button created and then you put in what you want that action to do. And so here it's an execute flow action. And what you then need to do is just go and get what's called the ID for the flow. Now, let me just try if I can to show you where to get that. Now, it's ever so slightly different depending how you are working with your Power Automate flows. I'll just zoom up a little bit. Here, these are a bunch of flows in a solution. Um, you'll notice here these are in a managed environment. So I won't be changing these, but all you do for my use case, this solution lives in a production environment. My SharePoint trigger is going to fire the production flow. You simply click into your flow. And when it loads up, you'll get this kind of screen and you'll see this one's probably been running a few times and you go export and what you're after is this this flow identifier 
you'll know it's a solution flow because it has this version before it. You copy that. It's a long string. You stick it into your, I won't do it because I've already done it. You stick it into your um, SharePoint JSON action. So that's, that's it. There. You can paste in what you've got and go and ask AI to fix it for you because it will really help unless you've got those eagle eyes and you've got a bit of experience. Um, the process I've just shown you is the same for a flow that might live in a default environment. It is just simply a case of going, um, it, it's the same process effectively. You go into the flow that's in your My Flows list, click it, you'll get the same screen, the same flow detail screen. You'll just get an ever such a slightly different flow identifier. Um, and that's what you're looking for. Once you've got that, you can trigger it from um, a list like this. So here we go. Same process as if I was using the integrate uh, menu here, but you just click the one you want and I'm going to approve it. And you've probably seen this screen pop up. This is just telling you your flow is about to run. I hope I've got my right IDs in there and I haven't broken them, but you run the flow. Done. Now, in a moment, that will change to approve because it's going to be doing its process properly. Um, we can just go and check it. Yeah, there you go, accepted. So I've now got a lovely email off the back of that flow that um, tells me I've been accepted and I'm going to go and speak at Intranet Insights, which I'm quite excited about. So there's a lot to kind of pack in there, but I guess uh, now's the time for me to stop sharing and invite any questions on that.